It's good to see your smiling faces today. And that you're still among the land of the living. <laughs> Sickness going around again, but hopefully not. Not anything we can't get through, Sister Rich. God's with us. He knows exactly where we're at. And I believe with all my heart, he's going to take care of us. Amen. He's taken care of us up till now, and he never changes, so I believe he will continue. How many of you are going to help me today? We're literally teaching to the choir today. You guys probably know this lesson better than I do. But, <laughs> but sometimes I find, even though I've read things, heard things preached all my life, Brother Rich, it's, it does me good to let it soak in study it a while, think about it, and meditate on it, because God's, God's word never gets old, does it? No. We've all said it many times, heard it said, you can read the Bible through as many times as you want, and you'll find something different in it every time, because his word comes alive. So let's try to invite him in this place today, we're going to read our scripture text, and then we'll ask the Lord to help us. And I always need his help, every minute of every hour of every day. And so let's jump into his word, and then be prayerful and that he would speak to our hearts and, and teach, give us something, help us to take something home with us. So we're going to begin reading in Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1 through 8, and then we'll jump to the book of Romans. Genesis 12 and 1 says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan, they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sechem, unto the place of Mori, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And let's jump to the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 12. The Bible says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory but not before God. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of circumcision, 
to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Pastor, would you read our focus verses, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, please? Let's go to the Lord and ask him to be with us today and just to talk to our hearts. Jesus, we love you. We praise you and worship you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to be in your house. Lord, thank you for the strength and the health to get out of bed this morning, to come to church, to worship and to magnify you. Lord, now we're asking, would you just please talk to our hearts, Lord. Teach us this morning. Teach to us, Lord. Help us to take something home with us that will help us through this week and that will help us, Lord, in our walk in life. We love you and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you have ever had someone make you a promise? Have you ever been disappointed? <laughs> I see heads nodding. We're human, aren't we? Brother Rich, sometimes we can't even hold it against them because I'm sure I fail too. I mean, I, I fail all the time. So I'm sure I told someone that I would try to do something and intentions were good and maybe it just flew away. And, and it's just, you just think about it then a few days later and you think, oh, I was supposed to have done that. <laughs> and then you go to them with your hat in your hand and say, I'm sorry, I just forgot. <laughs> People are professional promise makers. We make hundreds of promises, but we only keep a handful. During your next birthday, look closely on the gift table. You may not see it, but it's there. It's called skepticism. It is a gift that comes with each birthday. As we get older, we become more skeptical. Any of you notice that? Maybe, maybe not. You've seen so many things. You've been disappointed so many times that we're not careful, skepticism can creep, creep in. We're jaded when someone makes us a promise. If you're a parent, you may have seen your little ones, puppy dog eyes, when they pleaded, if you let us have a puppy, we promise to walk him and feed him and take him out and give him a bath. <laughs> I see people grinning. But the truth is, without assistance, that poor pup would not have seen water in his bowl or, or a bath in two weeks called promises. As parents, we make promises to our children. This medicine tastes good. It tastes, tastes just like bubble gum. I promise. We tell the truth. Our trusting child opens wide and gulps down another tablespoon of bubble gum flavored medicine and heads off to bed. Men, men and women stand love struck at the altar and make promises to each other to love, honor, and cherish one another and promise they fully intend to keep. But as the bills pile higher and life gets tougher, many times brides and grooms forget to love, honor, and cherish each other. It's called promises. And I look around this morning and you couples that are here are, I hope, happily married. You've stayed together up to this point. You've worked through some things. And the reason I say that is because if you hadn't worked through some things, you wouldn't be here. And there's things, Brother Rich, that crop up all the time. Gail and I have been married 39 years. We too stood here and took vows right here. But things still crop up. And you have to have God's help and ask him, Lord, will you help me? Will you help my wife? She has to pray for me. Will you help my husband? <laughs> We're talking about promises this morning. More, more promises fly during campaign season than pollen flies during allergy season. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Politicians use stumps and social media to make enough promises to fill up the RV that pulls them from stop to stop. But many times they only keep a handful of the promises they made. 
As we see the campaign sign sprout up in the lawns in our neighborhoods, we prepare for another barrage of promises. Naivety is a casualty of too many promises made that were never kept. As we grow up, we grow to realize a promise made is not always a promise kept. Humans do not always keep their promises. This much we can say, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? There has not failed one word of, of all his good promise. We can rest assured when God makes a promise, he will make good on his promise. Just ask our friend Abram. His story begins in the verses we read this morning. If God said it, we can believe it. I'll fail. I might forget. I might not execute on a promise I've made. I try, but I, but I, I fail. I'm a human. God never fails. Well, you say, well, I've been waiting for 15 years now, and I hadn't seen it yet. Let me assure you, time doesn't mean a whole lot to God. He's got all of it he needs. He was in the beginning, he is now, and he will be in the end. So why would he be confined to time, Brother Bauer? Time, he has all of it he needs. In our scripture text, God spoke to Abram and told him to leave home, leave his country, leave his father's house, leave his farm, and start walking. And God said, I'll tell you where you're going to go. I'll lead you. The Lord didn't give him turn-by-turn -turn directions, you know. We want to know, we human beings, why do we, why do we look at these things all the time? A lot of information on them, isn't there? Well, I've got this, this, and this wrong with me. I wonder what that does. I wonder if that's going to kill me. We want to know. We want to know as much as we can, but God didn't tell him. And he didn't have problems with the internet back then. <laughs> he didn't have to wonder. Well, I wonder what's over there, where he's taking me. We're heading this direction. I wonder where that's going to go. He just literally walked by faith. God just asked him to trust that he would show him where to go. God's first command came with a promise. In Genesis 12 and 2, as we read a few moments ago, God told Abram, I will make you a great nation. Who wouldn't go if you felt like God had promised you, I'm going to make you of you a great nation? And you would be excited about it. I mean, I guess we would be. There's something about home that we're comfortable with. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. But, but Abram didn't have a problem with that. He, he wanted to obey God, and he wanted to do what God wanted him to do. So the Lord went on to say, I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. What a promise. Abram and Sarah packed their belongings and left home. However, Abram only partially obeyed God. He was a man of faith, Brother Bauer, but he was still a human being. He said, I got this nephew over here named Lot. I believe I'd like to take Lot with me. And I don't find where he asked God, can I take him? But the power I just see, he just took him. He fully trusted God, but he didn't fully obey God. The Lord's command was clear, leave your father's house and leave your father's family. In other words, you just gather up yours and go. But Abram, as I mentioned, he wanted to take Lot with him. And not far into the journey, it already starts cropping up with problems. Because you see, Abram's herd was growing along the way. God was blessing him. But so was Lot's herd. And then you have a problem that all of a sudden there's not room for both of them. There's not room for all of the stock and the herdsmen and everybody that they've got to be in one place. So Abram suggested that they split up. You know, wouldn't it have been simpler to have split up way back here when they were leaving? But Brother Bauer, sometimes we want to do things our way. 
We think we can see what we want better than God can see what we need. But that's not true. I've found that to be the case many times in my life. But, but Lord, I want this. Why does it have to be that way? And usually he don't take the time to bother with answering us. If it's our job to trust him and know he knows what's best. And I think life is like a book. And you learn as you go. As you read deeper into the book, you learn more. As you walk deeper into life, you learn more. Is it always easy? No. But it's life's training. And sometimes if we just learn, if I just learn to trust God and say, Lord, you know what's best for me, you work it out. Instead of me trying to get involved. So now... Abram's faced with a, a decision. So he told Lot, he said, okay, I'm even going to give you the first choice. You go the direction you want to go, Sarah and I will go the opposite direction. So as any cattleman or herdsman or farmer would do, he looked around and he said, I believe I'll take that well-watered plain over there. That looks like a good place to me to abide. So he chose the well-watered plain of Jordan, and Abraham was fine with that, so he lived in the land of Canaan. But this is not the end of the story. This is not where it ended right here. Genesis 13 and 12 throws up the first red flag that Lot may become a hindrance to Abram's walk of faith. The Bible says, Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. And you guys have been in church for years and years and years. You know, you know where we're going with that. So what's wrong with Sodom? Well, it's a sinful place. So eventually Lot moved his family into Sodom. And time won't allow us to go into all the details of the problems this caused. But you already know because you're students of the Bible and you know what developed out of this. But I believe this tells us a little bit about Lot's heart. But if his heart would have been right, he wouldn't have wanted to have gone to Sodom. Because Sodom's not where a godly person needed to be. It was a city full of sin. So that tells us a little bit about Lot's heart right there. Do you think maybe God knew from the very beginning that Lot wasn't going to be like Abram? He wasn't going to believe like Abram and he wasn't going to do like Abram. So he was going to leave him behind. Many of you believe we are to obey God completely. Partial, uh, partial obedience is still disobedience. Sister Rich, if I obey God's word 99% of the time, but I fail that other 1%, then I've not been fully obedient to God. Yes, I've tried to be obedient, but I come up short. Does that mean he won't bless us? No, but it means there will probably be some repercussions along the way. Any of you, and you don't have to raise your hand, ever had repercussions down through life? Absolutely. I'll put mine up. Y'all can leave yours down. <laughs> but we, we do. So God kept all of his promises that he made to Abraham, but Abraham ended up fighting battles that he wasn't supposed to have to encounter. He fought with a sword once and he fought in prayer the other time to try to save Lot's life. It was still family. He still loved Lot even though they weren't living at the same place now. He still cared for him and probably felt an obligation to him, Brother Bauer, because I brought him out here. And maybe by this time Lot's realizing, well, you know, this is probably not what I should have done. He probably realized that a long time ago. But once we make decisions, sometimes we have to live with them. And the memory is a great thing. We'd all be in a mess if we didn't have a memory. But there's a few things in life you like to hit the delete button, Google it up, and say, Phew, and that one's gone. Brother Rich, you'd like for it to just be, be gone and, and just never happened. You don't know anything about it, but it's not that way. It's not that way. Our mind, and we say, well, I can, I forgive you, but I can't forget it. 
We've all probably said that. We've all probably had someone tell us that. And it's the truth. And we want to say, well, if you forgive me, forget it. But there's something about the mind. <laughs> I'm about to assure you that'll be the last thing to go. We might not remember what we did five minutes ago, but we'll remember 50 years ago. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? <laughs> and I'm hurrying, Pastor. <clears throat> God knew that Lot would not be like Abraham, as I mentioned a few moments ago, and that's exactly why Lot was not supposed to be on this journey. God speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through our pastor, through a song, and through our time of prayer. And when he speaks, I need to listen. It would behoove me to listen up and try to follow what God wants me to do. God spoke again and reminded Abraham of the promise he had made to him 24 years earlier. And this time, God gave Abraham a gift. And that gift came in the form of a little newborn son that they named Isaac that God promised him a long time ago. Promised him, as the way I read it, when he was 75 years old, Brother Rich. Now he's nearly 100. 75 and 24 is real close, isn't it? If Auntie was here, she'd say I'm nearly 100. <laughs> and God blessed them with that wonderful son. And I'm getting ready to close. When God makes us a promise, he doesn't expect us to sit idly by and do nothing. You know, we want to say, well, God said he's going to take care of that. I'm just going to sit down and Put it on cruise control. Brother Bauer, he don't expect us to do that. He expects us to do what we can do, and then he'll do what he has to do to make it come to, happen, uh, come to fruition. If we ever planted a crop in the spring of the year, do you think we'd have a harvest in the fall? It doesn't work that way. Our job's to plant, and God's job's to give the increase, because we can't water it. We can plant it, nurture it, and take care of it, but if he doesn't provide his part, regardless, it's a failure. But God just almost always provides water. And in the times that he hadn't provided water, you know what, Brother Bauer? He took care of us abundantly in different ways. Ways that you couldn't even foresee as a farmer. You think, I've got to make crop to pay the bills. But God provides some way, somehow. But he expects us to do our part, and then he'll do his part. But, as we're closing, Abraham was a human, as we mentioned a little bit ago. Not only did he take Lot when he wasn't supposed to take Lot, but about he became impatient waiting on this promised son. So he thought, I'll just help God out. But this is one time God didn't need involvement. He didn't need his help. He'd already promised him that he was going to provide that son through he and Sarah. And you know the story. Hagar, Sarah's servant, she became pregnant with a child. And his name was Ishmael. And he's the father of the Arab nations. And then the promised son Isaac is the father of the Jewish nations. And because of Abraham's disobedience, these nations are still fighting 4,000 years later. You think, well, if Abraham wouldn't have failed God and he would have just had faith, this wouldn't have ever happened if he would have just believed and waited. Well, same could be said for me, not in this regard, but... If I would have just trusted God, if I just wouldn't have worried and I would have done what I knew to do and let God handle it in his time, there's a lot of things I wouldn't have had to deal with either. And I'm closing. It took a quarter of a century, a quarter of a century, for God's promise to come true. Has God made you a promise sometime down through life? I'm sure we could all raise a hand. Are you still waiting on that promise to come to fruition? If God said it, 
I can't tell you when it'll happen, but I can tell you to rest assured it will happen. Because if God says it, Brother Arliss, it's going to happen. He's going to provide it. And if he's made a promise to you, you can rest assured that he will bring it to pass. Lord bless you. I love and appreciate you guys. Appreciate your loyalty to Gospel T. Appreciate your friendship to my wife and I. And it's just, it's good to be in the house of God. It's good to have a church family, Brother Bauer, that we know loves us. It's good to have you guys praying for my wife while she was on the puny list. God answers prayers. Amen. He, he hears and he answers and he cares. Lord bless you.